All right, I got tired of holding this uh, this bullshit phone out this whole time, so I gotta remember where the camera's located on this phone. So you guys are over here. Um, the next video is going to be split timing. And so this one is, I covered it on one of the tech pages. Actually, it was, it was the Rotary tech page. And the OEM settings, which are pretty much zero on very, very low cruising scenarios. Um, they've got a 15 degree split for, um, for idle, which really calms the motor down. Uh, it actually uses the most amount of fuel. If you ever want to wonder about that. Um, and then as you go up in RPM, it's going to add more split. And then as you go up in pressure, it's going to add more split. So, um, definitely not to, to throw, uh, Mike and John uh, against them, but in their video they showed, you know, a 14, 13, 12, 10, whatever, going down in it. Uh, as you went up in boost, they were going down in split. That's going to make more power, but be less safe. So the way that split timing works is the higher the split, so the difference of the leading trailing, the larger that split, the safer the motor is going to be. But that's kind of to an extent of uh, to the build because depending on where your port locations are, what's happening is the engine's rotating. You're having a combustion event at the lower port, and it's getting further down. Let's say if the 15 degree splits, 15 degrees more on apex seal, and then you're firing that second plug. Well, if you don't have this timing correct. What ends up happening is it almost like backfires the rotor and you lose compression or you lose combustion efficiency in that way. So if you're ever dyno tuning and something feels wrong or you're driving something feels wrong, uh, either disconnect the uh, trailing plugs or turn them off in the ECU. That's a better way of doing it. And just see if power increases because maybe you had it backwards of all things. And, um, it's essentially backfiring on the the rotor, slowing down the combustion event that just occurred. So that's the gist of what you're trying to focus for, right? Um, it is generally going to be somewhere around 10 degrees um, for moderate boost levels and higher engine RPM. Um, I think Haltech is a really good split timing map. Deptronic is flat at 10, so it's safe. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I've seen some JDM ECUs running Power of C, and uh, oh god, don't get me started Power of C again. Uh, and they run like stupidly low timing. We're talking like six degree split at the highest boost, and. Uh, it's a hyper aggressive scenario, right? Um, if you were to run in a factory 12, a distributor style, it would be something like zero degrees, zero degrees, zero degrees. And then when you hit, uh, a certain map value, so let's say 90 KPA, hundred KPA, something that's close to atmospheric, the distributor, which is vacuum advanced would advance the split to about seven degrees. That seems to be a pretty good idea for, uh, for NA stuff is I'm having anywhere between five and 10 degrees. It doesn't seem incredibly sensitive. That's going to be another point of this video. Split timing is not incredibly sensitive when it comes to power. It is for safety and it is for fuel economy. And if you figure it out, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but, uh, so the factory would go from a zero to a seven degree split based on the distributor of the 12A engine. And uh, I think that that's really something to consider because Mazda did their homework. And for people to deny that, you guys don't have thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of calculated, dyno-tuned, whatever it is. So 
if you ever try to think of who does stuff right, start at the OEMs and go back. Because they're generally going to be on top of their game. They're the ones that designed it. They know better. This goes for sensor choice. It goes for uh, overall design characteristics of where things are located. And bear in mind, you know, they're, they're judged by accountants. So there are going to be corners cut. But you'll see mathematically or, or however you break this down, uh, they're generally doing things right. Um, so quick overview, uh, higher the split value is generally safer, lower is usually more aggressive, and then you want that to normally sweep from low to high, depending on low to high load or low to high RPM. Um, there are some theories that say otherwise. Um, for my personal dyno testing, I've done a few NA cars where I have like all damn dyno. They're like, yeah, unlimited time. If you get to see NA ignition timing and specifically all the fuel is identical, right? Fully, fully set up. I can go through and like half degree here, half degree here, half degree here, and like really find MBT on these motors. And they are more timing sensitive than I think most people have ever relayed to the public. Um, not so much in split, but in leading. Um, and with fueling, fueling is kind of the bread and butter, but the biggest thing for rotary that I've found is injection timing and that's also for any kind of engine response, because if you make more torque at lower RPM, you now have inertia pulling you through and now creating more power at the power band. That's essentially what injection timing is about. You're, you're optimizing an engine at the crack of a throttle um, for different loads than RPM. That's, that's the gist of it. So slow timing not super sensitive if anything around a little bit more conservative so like 10 degrees all across the board is okay but if you're upwards of maybe 20 pounds of boost or more depending on your fueling whatever it is add more split um, i think most ecus are going to stop somewhere around 15 to 20. i don't see any reason to go beyond 20. Uh, and then depending on whether you are a FC or FD block, or REW block, I'm sorry, or a Renesis block, like it's going to change, right? Because spark plug location changed between FC and FD. Um, it's another thing to consider. So the optimization points for each engine are going to be different. Um, and then this might transition well into, hopefully Nate does a video for, uh, for Kevin on there's a, like a Franken Mazda, Franken build. So whether or not you're trying to go for a crazy NA power, uh, high compression type stuff, uh, or doing a lot of high compression turbo stuff for me personally, um, you can set up the engine and the port work and everything to work in unison for that goal. So hopefully he goes over kind of like a, a Franken Wankel, uh, as Kevin calls it, uh, configurations for different setups, really cool. Um, and the main thing is figure out what you want to do first, right? So if you want a power band from three to 7,000 RPM, 4,000 is a pretty fat power band, right? Then you have to set up porting accordingly, which is probably very much like stock or street port. And then the turbo itself has to be sized accordingly. Um, so on and so forth. So that's going to be kind of a figure out what you want to do first. And then we build it around that. Because if you say you want a thousand horsepower, but you want to have torque at 2000 RPM, you're off your damn rocker and you're on the wrong fucking car. So anyways, that's part two. I like this new shooting style. My arm's not tired. That's fucking great. And, uh, I'm in a wider frame. So that worked. All right, guys. See you in the next one.